Is it possible to go out with 35mm film cameras and shoot in such a way that you're getting close to that medium format experience and quality? Well, I believe it is. On a recent trip, I went out with my 35mm film bodies as opposed to my usual hefty and beautiful Bronica SQ camera, which takes a 6x6 negative. Excellent camera, much slower way of working. Typically with 35mm, you tend to work quite quickly. Usually handheld, I often do trips into the hills where I'm shooting without a tripod. But on this occasion, I took my lovely little Nikon FE and I coupled it, as opposed to taking zooms, with clutch of prime lenses. Now these are all fairly old lenses, but they're very, very high quality. Lenses from the 1970s, 1980s, designed to get the best out of 35 millimeter film. Now, part of the experience of shooting the likes of medium format or even large format is the slowing down. The, the pace is generally a lot more leisurely. You're taking your time to compose images and you're using a sturdy tripod, mirror lockup, optimum apertures, and usually, usually just take less shots. It's gonna be far fewer, far less frantic this time. So anyway, let's have a look at the trip I did recently and uh, we'll come back and discuss some of the results. So Robin and I have come out this morning, uh, just had a cafe break to work out what we want to shoot. We don't want to rush, we don't want to dive into things and uh, basically rattle off lots of shots because actually Robin's shooting film as well today in his X-Pan, which I'm incredibly jealous about. And we're down in a sort of quarry area, I've been here before, you may have seen it on previous vlogs. And I am going to take my time because uh, I, just because I'm shooting 35mm doesn't mean I'm going to rattle off loads of shots. And yes, I've done that on previous vlogs when I've been up in the hills handheld. But today, and as I said, I'm doing that slow approach. It's, it's treating it like medium format. Uh, it's just because it's a small piece of film doesn't mean you have to uh, rattle it off like it's digital. I am going to slow right down and do something a little bit different today. Well, a bit of a, a rushed one here. The rain has started. My camera's not waterproof, uh, neither am I. And I'll just quickly take you through what I'm shooting. Uh, I have on my camera a 28 mm wide angle lens. I've set it to uh, f11 and I'm shooting manually at about a quarter of a second. I have a Fuji Provia 100 in there, a slide film. Very little contrast and dynamic range, so this will boost that a little bit. Lots of greens, I'm loving the wall the line of it, uh, shooting about a sort of quarter of a second so there may be a bit of movement in there, maybe a bit of drop off in the focus as well because I am focused about sort of five feet. A little bit of softness as it recedes, not a problem. I'm going to have to pack up quickly now though because the rain is starting to fall. Well, that's a real shame that because I was just getting myself sort of warmed up and I think I saw a better composition as I packed the camera away um, but the rain is, is starting to set in. Having said that it's not too far to come back and if conditions improve I will definitely come back down here and spend probably about half an hour just refining that composition. It's well worth the effort. Now, after a little bit of searching and thankfully a little bit of easing of the uh, showers, I've come across something else which I can show you behind me, hopefully. There's a lovely wall there. I think it's, yeah, it's definitely sandstone. And it's providing a beautiful backdrop. Now, the sky at the top is very bright uh, up there. And the foreground is a little bit messy, shall we say. So by putting on my 85 millimeter lens, I've actually cropped right in. I'm interested in that central tree and the contrast between the vegetation, there the leaves, and the beautiful sandstone in the background. Now that's perfect for my Provia slide film. Very low contrast. Now there's a bit of wind blowing, 
but I think I managed to catch it at just the right time and I have bracketed half a stop each side. A couple of reasons for that. One is I want to get the best possible uh, image to scan or, or uh, digitise later. And the second is I may well get some movement on one of the images or I could get a scratch on the film. So it always pays to have a, a spare in there. Now, in a very similar way to medium and large formats, when you're shooting with these fixed focal lengths, these primes, you have to think a lot more about your composition in advance before you set the, the camera and tripod up, because you haven't got the luxury of obviously zooming in and out. Now, I'm on a, a bit of a grassy bank, steep drop off in front and very difficult to move behind. Um, I was moving around quite a lot beforehand before I chose my, my lens and eventually I had to go for the 85mm um, because I wanted to exclude the sky and actually cut out some of the base of the tree which is a bit boring. Now if I'd gone for the 50 I'd have had to either get closer or I would have included too much detail. Now I couldn't get closer because there is a steep drop off of a bank in front of me. So it's a bit of a disadvantage in many ways shooting with these primes but I'm used to it with my medium and large format work and ultimately I think I turned that disadvantage into an advantage because Normally with a zoom, if I'd have had my 28 to 200, I'd have set it up at the first place I came to and zoomed in and out until I felt it was about right. And that is a compromise. That is not going to be as good as thinking carefully about what you want to include and exclude and the actual focal length and the way that's going to compress the perspective. I think the 85mm was the right choice in this case. Well, we've come out to another set of, of rocks, one of the uh, the edges up here in the Peak District. It's blowing a gale, but the rain has uh, blown over. It was very heavy about an hour ago. Now, I have been struggling for about 40 minutes trying to preview something. I've got a few shots which are almost there, but I'm not prepared to set the camera up and shoot film. Uh, I want them to be better than that. So I'm going to persist and see if I can just align some of these rocks and the heather in the perfect combination. Now it is blowing a gale so uh, I have to be quick here. I have taken a shot of a prominent rock with heather leading up to it. I have a wide angle lens on 28 millimeters and I've set it to f11. Now I'm not going to get everything pin sharp in the foreground but given the amount of wind and the fact it's blowing the heather around there'll be movement anyway and that actually accentuates the mood in this case. I've had to take three images because the light's changing rapidly and my grad at two stops off isn't going to hold the sky back quite sufficiently in all three I don't think. So I've bracketed one stop each side, I've gone for a 30th, a 15th and a 60th. So hopefully one of those is going to uh, capture the, the dynamic range and uh, yeah, not too much movement hopefully. Well, many hours have passed, uh, many hours, uh, different coat for a start. Uh, we've been back to the car, got a drink, far, far too windy before. I couldn't even speak, couldn't talk you through the last photos at all. Um, but it has dipped now, we're about an hour off sunset and we're back up on the rocks and the light is much nicer, much nicer now. So uh, yeah, break out the camera and let's see what we can get.
Well, I have taken uh, an initial shot, even though it is a little bit uh, harsh still, but I've managed to take an image of uh, a small town or a settlement and some lovely rolling hills behind it now. I've had to exclude the sky because it's fairly bright and bland, but uh, using the 135mm lens, the prime, uh, I've got a tight crop and that's left out the distracting foreground field and also that, uh, that bland sky. Shot around 5.6 at about a 30th of a second, so yeah, just waiting about another 15 minutes and we'll get some of this foreground being a little bit easier to shoot, shall we say, and maybe getting some sky lighting up too. Surprisingly, it's all a bit of a, a mad scramble at the end of the day. The, the light has gone off the foreground rocks, but the grasses are so bright, they're so, so orange, that they're still picking up what residual light there is bouncing around from the bright sky. It's a bit of a hit and miss one, this, because I am really looking at two seconds to one second, and I'm not sure if that's going to freeze the motion. So, um, yeah, not really too sure about this one, but uh, we'll see when we get it back. Well, it is all but dark now, uh, well past sunset, we've had the best of the light, but I'm still shooting. My preview device on the iPhone says it still looks reasonably good, um, but my exposures are running to around about 15 seconds at f16. Um, I'm having to lean on the camera bag and pull down on the centre column to try and get some stability. I don't know if it's going to work, to be honest, but uh, it is worth a try. If it comes out, it could be quite good. I've got a, a one-stop hard grad on there to take the sky down, but I don't know if that's right. It's very, very dark in the foreground. Bit of a fingers crossed on this. Well, that's pretty much it for the evening. Um, it is now proper dark and just got to yomp back through the heather, back to the car. I've really enjoyed using the, uh, the Nikon today. I've slowed down, I've used all sorts of techniques to maximise quality. The lenses are excellent, uh, optimum apertures, gradding where necessary. I've got a nice fine grade slide film in there. So hopefully the results have come out really well and you've seen them before me now, obviously. Uh, so let's have a quick uh, wash up session at the end and uh, see how they came out. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, that short video. It was, a, it was a very windy day. It's a very pleasant day, though. Temperatures were nice. And I finished uh, one complete roll of film, which is uh, perfect because I didn't want to run into a second. Developing costs, waste film, etc. Now, how did it go? Well, I was very pleased, as it turns out. I was very pleased with the uh, flexibility of the 35mm. I had additional depth of field over my normal Bronica. And, of course, I had extra frames I could shoot because you're getting 36 per roll. A little bit of bracketing in there helped. One or two was spoilt by uh, the movement of the wind. Very surprised to find that the, uh, the last image I showed you, which was 15 seconds at f16, was sharp. So leaning on the actual uh, tripod, pulling down on the centre column worked really well. So anyway, I decided rather than do the usual pixel peeping, which doesn't uh, look great on film anyway, and uh, who cares because nobody else looks at uh, your images at 100%, apart from other photographers, I decided to make a print on my Epson 3880. Now, this is the resulting uh, A2 print. This is done on my Epson, as I said. It is done with the highest quality. Uh, it took a long time to print, about 10 minutes. uses a fair amount of ink but it is really, really nice. Now it's not perfect. This is one of the shots from earlier in the day. There's a little bit of wind movement rocking the branches around. I only shot at 5.6 to try and freeze as much as possible. So I wasn't able to absolutely nail the front to back focus. There's a little bit of areas where the branches are, are soft, but I don't care. It's almost grainless. It is almost grainless at A2, uh, a testament to the uh, quality of the lenses and also obviously the slide film, the grain is related to the, the film itself. 
I scanned the image on my Minolta 5400. Um, far better than the Epson flatbeds. You'll be struggling to get quality like this out of an Epson. But if you have a, a DSLR or a mirrorless camera, you can also scan using that. Uh, I've been experimenting with that lately. Uh, I'm happy with some of the results, not so happy with the others, and I'll do a video at some point looking at the various options you have for home scanning of 35mm. So, uh, will I be going out again with the 35mm camera and shooting film in a slow, considered fashion? Absolutely. I think next time I go up a mountain and go on a long walk, I think I'll take a little bit more effort. I shall take a nice clutch of lenses covering all the focal lengths, and I will take my time and set up shots. Um, I do like going out and shooting with a body handheld, but there are times when it pays to slow down. So yes, I do hope you found the video informative, uh, as useful as ever, and I'll see you again on the next trip. Thanks for watching.